Hey guys, and uh, welcome back to the um, Alienated Dads Network. Now I'm working quite late tonight and wanted to put this video together based on the fact that I'm speaking to a lot of you and um, I've got the same, same message to give to a lot of you. So I'm quite behind. So today we're going to talk about something that's been really close to my heart. I've, put, I've lived it, I've experienced it. I've supported thousands of dads through it. It's parental alienation specifically of fathers. Now, I've been working with dads like you for over 10 years now. And I've seen firsthand and experienced firsthand the pain and devastation that comes with being rejected by your own children. As a Mackenzie friend, I've helped countless dads navigate the complex and often brutal world, I would say, of family court. I'd say my, my role is evolving. It has evolved. It does evolve as it's, we all do. And I'm now putting this application to you to become a narcissistic abuse recovery coach because it seems to be a big part of what I do with the experience that I've acquired over the years. And my goal is to create a safe and supportive community where dads and some mums can come together and get advice, support and guidance on how to navigate the challenges of divorcing or separating from a narcissistic partner. If you're new to my channel, um, you might not know that I've been posting content on here for a good couple of years now, um, mainly about narcissism, divorce, um, separation, family court, applications to court, random stuff. But what I've realized is that parental alienation is a topic that needs continued attention. It doesn't stop. You can't just do one video and be like, that's it, done. Especially when it comes to fathers. So many of my clients are struggling with this issue right now. And I want to help. And in this video, we're going to explore just that. We're going to look at some of the tactics that a narcissistic ex-wife or girlfriend could use to alienate you. Um, from the children and from the children, from your children, basically. We'll talk about the signs that, the signs and symptoms, the signs, signs and symptoms that um, you need to look out for. And most importantly, what you can do to protect yourself and your children. That's more importantly, the relationship with your children, even. So if you're ready, let's, let's try and dive straight in, shall we? Let's go. This is a painful subject. And if you're struggling with this issue, then know that you're not alone. I'm here to support you and I'll do my best to provide you with the guidance and advice that you need to get through this time right now. And I know how difficult it is because I've experienced it. I've lived it. I do live it. It's never ending. So what does the narcissist do? They start by weaponizing the kids. They try to drive a wedge between you and your children. And then they try to permanently damage the relationship so that the kids don't ever want to talk to you again. Um, and because we live in a society where, in my opinion, parental alienation is much harder for fathers, it's essential to understand the tactics that these narcissists use. So the first tactic is bad mouthing. It's an obvious one. Um, the narcissistic ex-wife or girlfriend will say everything in the book, and I mean everything, to make you look bad. Daddy has financial problems. Uh, he used to cheat on me. He beat me up. He used to abuse me. He verbally he, he made me look small. He, and, and the kid is just going to start believing this stuff, especially, especially if they're young. They may even start to feel guilty for having a good time with you because the mum is always miserable when they return. The next tactic, well, the next tactic is to portray you as the abusive person. Another tactic is to plan exciting things during your time with the children. So she'll plan to trip a trip to Disney World or something like that, or a trip to Turkey, or a fun outing on with the children that the children will want to go and spend time with her instead of spending time with you. And when you do get to spend time with the children, she'll try to make make you feel guilty for not being able to provide the same level of excitement. The mum will always say that you're unsafe that you you have anger problems and that you're incompetent. 
and the kid will start to question your ability. And because you're, you know, you're not, you're the, one, you're the one who's had to move out of the home. So it looks like you're the one who's done something wrong. They may even start to feel afraid of you. Now the mum will also try to treat the children like a child, like a best friend. She'll disclose way, way, way too much, way too much information to make, you know, to, to, to them, making them feel like they're responsible for her problems. Almost like they're going to have to start parenting her. The kid will start to feel like guilty for not being able to fix everything. The mum will also start trying to limit the information that you know about your child. She'll withhold important information, like from medical information to school events, um, dentist appointments, and even like school sporting events. And she'll and when and when you do find out, she'll make it seem like you're not interested in your child's life because you didn't find out yourself or you didn't find out early enough. The mum will also try and get you, the child to pick a side. She'll make them feel like they have to choose between you and, and if they don't choose her, oh, they'll be punished. And the kid will start to feel like they're walking on eggshells and they want an easy life, never knowing what will set her off. Well, the name, your name will generally set her off. Your name or, or anything to do with you, anything that she sees about you. And the mum will also monitor and intercept your communication. Um, if you write a letter, a postcard, post a card, that'll never get through. But she'll go through her phone, read her messages, and even pretend to be the child when talking to you. When you do get the chance to talk to your child, she'll try and limit the conversation, making it seem like the child doesn't want to talk to you. Again, this is not the child, this is just the, the situation that the child is in. When your child returns spending time, from, don't, when your child does return from spending time with you, the mum will obviously interrogate. Um, she'll ask them what they did, where they did it, what they ate, what they did for breakfast, what time they went for bed. And then, you know, she'll criticise everything, everything that the child did with you, making them feel like they're not good enough. Now, look, this is the tip of the iceberg. This, you know, this is tip of the iceberg stuff. I know this is a lot to take in and a lot to take on board, but it's essential to understand these, these tactics so you can protect yourself and your children. And then I think there's another video we're going to be doing um, and we'll talk about damage control and how to spot the signs of parental alienation. And if you need more help in navigating this, I offer coaching services. There'll be a link in my bio um, and, and underneath the video, probably no doubt. So I will no doubt see you in the next video. Now, 